When I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. So that's the start of my show. And my testimony is that, if you have to say it in one sentence, God does not have to be good. Life does not have to be fair. You know, and that's a... That's what I tell my students. They complain and go, look, life isn't fair. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be fair. And then immediately they, they realize, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and it's who, 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 from whom, you know, we're talking about here. So this is a God. And this is a, and it's a story about a good kid. He learns that this God doesn't have to be good. He says, okay, I'll deal with that. But if that's like a river that I got across, I want to get to know that river. Like Manny is here in the river, right? Swimming around. around. You take a stand, you're going to try to walk on the water, you follow through, you end up maybe having to swim, you know, you reflect, you sit on some rock and think, what was that all about? And you do it again. I'm going to walk on the water again, right? You keep practicing. So, the good child over here, like when I was a child, says, okay, I want to learn how to, to walk, rock, hop from rock to rock, right? But I'm going to learn how to deal with that. But the, the bungling kid, you know, in the bad kid's world says, oh, I'm not going to deal with that. But this river of needs or of doubts or expectations gets closer, closer, closer. You kind of hit your limits. You kind of hit bottom. You got to get saved. Someone's got to miraculously throw you across that river and put you on the other side. You know, that's why we have Jesus. We have my friend David Ellison Bay. He's a Moor, but I think of him as my, my Jesus, my everywhere where you see the Fez. It's kind of like my personal Jesus. My personal. Help me get across. So... So that's the story, but they meet up in the same place, and this is the law, this is like the four positive commandments, you know, do this, honor your parents, you know, treasure creation, um, believe in God, you know, honor his name, but there's six never negative commandments, keep them separate, like don't, don't kill people, <laughs> don't lie, right? But either way, they make us sensitive, you know, to the fact that there's all this bad stuff happening out there that maybe we could help fix. Maybe, you know, it's too early to praise God. Maybe we could be part of it before he gets praised, get included, right? Mm -hmm. So that when he's praised, we're praised too, kind of. Okay, so to start, and it's like an invo... Oh, and so I'd like to thank um, uh, D uh, to be in the choir. And I'm, a, I'm very inconsistent, you know, sometimes I'm in Lithuania, and sometimes, often I sleep in, you know, and so... And, and I don't mind what people tell me. You know, I take it to heart and I accept. I put it in a little cupboard there, right? Whatever this is. But I feel like those are good things in that cupboard. You know, the people... I feel like I have, you know, 25 mothers who love me. <laughs> you see, right? And they love because there's little little places in my... So there's like a wall of saints. So my friend John here, he's in my wall of saints, right? The, the kids who used to protect me on the play lot, right? They're in that wall of saints. My parents up there, you know, at the very top, they're on the wall of saints, you know. Oh, my sweetheart, my true love, she's in my wall of saints. And here's me, a good kid, jumping from rock to rock, you know, chasing after my tiny little god. See, the good kid has a little god he chases around, because that's all he needs, right? Gods get smaller, smaller. But the big kids, they need a giant butterfly god. You can't even see here. Look at these demons jumping on this. Look at this guy trapped in this television, right? Saying God's got it. So everything that's white, see, black is good, because we're black. So... Black God is black. You know, that's everywhere you see black is godly. Yeah. But you see this white, it's like God made room for something to happen. He made room for us, right? And all these colors, he kind of made room in a special way. You know, but and so but this person, D was here, I'm gonna explain it. This river shrinks here, shrinks, shrinks, because he didn't want to cross that river that God doesn't have to be good. So he's staying inside there, he's staying inside. And there's these demons here who want to keep him inside. And then he's got his Jesus here, he's kind of lifting all up, say, hey, let's get across that river. So he gets thrown across that river finally. He hits it down, breaks down. But the point is, look at, there's this giant butterfly behind here. See, on the bad kids, well, God is big, you can't even see him here. But if you look carefully, you'll see some red antenna up there, right? You'll see this giant big butterfly. In your face, God is in the bad kids' world. But no one wants to see him, no one sees him, right? So, so why don't we... Um, then start one and one final question, because it is our testimony down there. Um, but I think if we don't sing too loud at a certain point, they won't mind. 
maybe we should be good. So we have a list of songs. Does anyone need the words or not? The words are... Um, we shouldn't. We shouldn't, probably. But if you do, the words are right here. If you want to see what songs we'll sing, maybe send if you could pass them out for me. And then I'd like to start up. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll uh, in, invoke ourselves, but I'll just say, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Thank you, God, for letting us be a church wherever we assemble. Thank you for having such a lovely church in St. Benedict the African, at least that we can support and, and be, be loving. And thank you, help us live our lives so that we create churches everywhere we go. In our heart and our Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Son. And now what you see, as you sing it, please think to see, can we make it in music? So this story I'm telling you, it's a musical story. We'll start by, and I'll explain each piece. But we'll, we'll start by looking at um, God. Imagine God so big that he can't fit in this room. And imagine God so headstrong. Imagine God so headstrong that what he thinks happens automatically. Right? He doesn't have time to think twice, because it already happened the first time. Right? So he doesn't think twice. It is, it does, it thinks. So that's a headstrong. We like to plan. But somebody has to be better than any plan could possibly be. And so most things aren't interesting to God. But this question, am I necessary? That's a godly question. Would I be here even if I wasn't? Oh, if I'm a God worth my salt, I should be. It's interesting, I thought it, it happens. Right? So he removes himself. Oh, no God. And he's waiting. Where am I going to creep in? Where am I? So we believe in Jesus. So we know that even in the humblest vessel, even in the human form, right? God can spring up. Okay? So this is a headstrong God. And he has the days of creation. So because we're so lovely, the first... <laughs> Cynthia is the first day of creation. God made order, right? That's one perspective. And Audrey is the second day of creation. Existence, because you need two perspectives. For a chair to exist, you've got to say, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it better be there when I sit down, right? So you need... <laughs> Participation. You need... That's a liberty. You need three perspectives. you got to take a stand, follow through, reflect, take a stand. Uh, Corina, right? Knowledge, four perspectives, whether, what, how, why. Mar Maria, decision taken here. That uh, every effect has had its cause, but not every cause has had its effect. You, know? you look backwards, yeah. things already happened. You look forward, things can still happen. In the present, they need. That's what and then Barbara smiling here is uh, morality. Okay? So when you connect with God, you say, look, God, you love me more than I love myself. I'd rather you do the thinking. I'd rather you do the being. I'd rather you do the, you know, doing. But, but we're not always in connection, right? Like, look at Jesus on the cross. You know, why did you abandon me? When you, but stay close anyway, so that I can take a stand, follow through, reflect. So this is it. So in the blackness, I love black like God's unseen. We don't see this. And so, to honor God and to invite God and to include God and to love such a God. To say, look, we recognize you, something about you. You're always there and we love you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless, Bless the Lord, Lord O oh my soul. become so, so, uh, so hard to, so, so he opened up so much space for us that he became in the smallest possible thing, which is us. 
And so you look at that tiny little red person, okay? And it's kind of like Jesus, it's kind of like anybody of us, okay? And because God understood that this is what's happening. But, but Jesus had to come and understand and figure it out. Hey, where's God? Maybe, maybe I live as God, right? And how do we know they're the same God? Because they understand the same thing. They understand the same spirit, right? And so, mo you know, I and I think most of us, you know, we kind of went astray from that. We had our chance. <laughs> we kind of didn't appreciate, you know, as much as we could have. But we still feel that Jesus inside us opportunity. So the good child embraces that. Say, hurrah, right? And so this is the story. I say, when I was a child, I say, Lord, God, you're just a possibility, maybe. But I love it, you know. And you give me the freedom to think, and I'll always believe in you. And let's go. So this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And so when you're like that, and you're excited, you're like... A you're like a child whose who parent let him run out in the street, running through the world, and you say, I want to know. So this is the house of knowledge. All these things to know. And everywhere you see shoes or socks or bare feet, this is ways of figuring things out, stepping in somebody's shoes, right? And it looks like a house, but it looks like the fez. You know, you'll see that fez later. The moors wear the fez. They're connected to God. So this house of knowledge is a way to be connected with big God, you know, beyond them. And so, order my steps. All my steps in your word, dear Lord, lead me, guide me every day. Sin your anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Because what happens? How does this Jesus, how does this red eye, and how does God, if they're the same, they got to meet somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. They got to meet. And when you got to meet, you got to meet somewhere. You got to meet over here, 
or you got to need over there, right? Or you got to need in the middle. So that's this yellow U. Yellow U is where they need. And yellow U is very important because red eye sees the whole beautiful big good picture. Backwards. <laughs> red eye is looking backwards. It's kind of got blown out like from an explosion, right? But going backwards, we look to God and it all ends in death. But God's saying, don't look at me, look out there, look out there. We keep going, keep going. So we've got to turn it around. So they meet in this yellow U. The problem with yellow U is that it's fragmentary, right? Meet over here, meet over there, meet over there. It gets longer. And so this red eye is bumbling around. So this is like the Jesus who walks with you, right? But you walk with the higher self. But it turns out then you've got to walk with the lower self too. You've got to keep looking for the higher self. Keep looking for the, you know, God. So that it's connected, connected. So what happens in this world? So this world bumbling around and we all have that in us, right? The good kid, the bad kid. But even if you're a good kid, you have to spend some extra time in the bad kid's world because they need us, right? Like this, we go out there, right? So either way, we're familiar. And so this is a song where a person's kind of bumbling around and maybe happy about it, you know, but maybe a little bit concerned about it. And his eyes on the chair. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should I shadow Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Yeah. 
they made it across. And we can all make it across too. And we go back to this side. It's in parallel, right? Both sides. And it's both, we know both sides. But you start rock, jumping from cloud to cloud, rock to rock. And you realize like that exciting moment, you know, when it all changed. But you realize that it's every rock to rock it changes. And here's 12 questions. Like what does it mean? Like what do I care about? Do I care about thinking? What do I value? What do I want to know? What do I wish to achieve? What I think out loud, you know, we're being videoed, right? Would I let somebody video me, right? Where do I think best? Maybe in a place like this, I think all right, you know? What is my dream in life? How can we help each other? What do I know? If I don't know somebody's dream in life, and I never saw them make any progress about it, right? And I don't know what they value. Why would I care what they know, right? What do I know? What can I teach? What do I know of God? If, I, if somebody never had a dream in life, you know, but if they did, if they had a dream in life, they made it happen, they saw what it took, then I wouldn't know about their God, right? At the end, right? So this baby says, don't tell me about God, let's work on it. Come and jump in it. And so that's, a, that's not one big leap, that's hopping all life. That's the exciting part, you're living it all the time, right? So that's how we live. So sign me up. Sign me up. For the Christian Jubilee, write my name on the road. I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. When Jesus comes. When Jesus comes. Oh. You know, don't pass me by, hold on, you know, hallelujah. But that was like a little moment, right? Like that's like comparing procreation, you know, with love, right? That's just a little moment. This is like you can be doing that all day long, you know, making those hops, making those jumps, asking those questions, challenging yourself, right? We can live this way all day long. So Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven. He said, it's not for the rich in spirit. It's not for this wasteful luxury of, you know, being thrown over, being a martyr. It's not for the martyrs. It's not for the people who say, oh, I believe, and I don't, you know, it's all over, right? I believe, do what you want with me. Mm -hmm. The poor in spirit are the skeptical. They say, look, I got a little heart, you know, and I'll take a little leap. And don't make fun of me for making that little leap. Don't have me fall on my face, and then the next time I'll take another leap. And we can leap all day long if you want. That's how babies walk, right? We walk. Mm -hmm. Don't make fun of me because I try to walk, right? So that's the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Everything he talks about the kingdom of heaven, it's not about being saved. It's about loving your enemy. It's about turning the other cheek. It's about being true in marriage, right? It's about it's about all these things, right? So that's living in this world. It's not so exciting, but it's actually you gotta imagine the excitement. And when Jesus and so Jesus and the Father, you see, but the Father thought differently. Jesus said, Look. It's just so exciting. I meet people who believe me. I meet people who would lay their life down for me. Right? For me, maybe not for somebody else. But Peter would have died for me. Right? And those people believe me. And I see that their belief makes them whole. And they say, they say, and I see not everyone's into that. But let's believe in the ones who believe. Maybe the other ones will turn around, right? Why don't we have a little beautiful world of fishermen, right? Fishers of men, fishers of women, right? Let's do that. It could be so beautiful, it's happening. And God the Father says, you want the good, right? Mm -hmm. Over here is supposed to say, 
I want all of the good. I want all of them. Right? So you've got to die. That's not good news. That's good news for God. You're going to die? I've got a son who's going to die. You're going to die. Right? Because, that's, because they're so nasty, these people. They would kill somebody because they was good. They'd be jealous of a person so good that they would kill him because the person was that good. And then they would say they were saved by that person that they killed. Because they said God wanted them to be saved. I thought, like, shoot, would Peter want to be saved if that meant Jesus dying? No, he'd say, I don't need to be alive, and I don't need to live forever. You need to be alive. So anybody who says it's good news that Jesus died is a sicko, in my opinion. It's good news that Jesus was alive. That's the good news. But we're taught differently. He said, repent, the kingdom of heaven is here. That's the good news. Be a good kid, the kingdom of heaven is here. He never said, be saved. You believe? He said, be good. That's what I think. That's what, this is my testimony, what I learned in my life. No one ever taught me. I had to figure it out myself. Because I read Jesus. Because he said, I pray for the ones, look. He goes, that's not my will. That's your will. Let's get it straight. I cry, but I'll do it for you. He didn't cry for his life. He cried because he didn't like that picture. He liked this picture. He wouldn't cry over his life. But he said, cool. But he said, it's bigger, right? Like, it's going to be better this way. You're right. You're God. You know. Or you don't even know, but let's just do it anyway. Right? So that's beautiful. So, and so, but he goes, but I'm praying for the ones who believed in me. I'm not praying for the world. Right? I'm praying for Peter. Right? I'm praying for them to be true. And they're going to stick with it. That's why we're here. We stuck with it. You know? Not everything's fair, not everything's good. But we don't care. We stuck with it. So my mother prayed for me, right? That's what we see. My mother prayed. My mother prayed for me. She had me on her mind. She took her on her knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising from today and I'm learning from your faith and my faith with you is that uh, Jesus is really remarkable you know he's the one we like we, we love that and the story I told it's a story right yeah. it's a story I put together through our love through you know learning through getting to be included through being a good kid right and through you know saying hey we're all the same that story is this story. It's just that this story is more interesting. It's that that story is this story. This story is that story repeated every day, every second, every life. Right? Right? Is that tussling. You don't have to be like one moment in my life. This can be all here. You know, we know that. So, but Jesus is the one who made it real. Because Jesus for us. But I tell this story. See, this is not a story about obeying. Right? Like, to do this. To live this way, the easy way to do it is just obey the Father. The Father says, look, I want you to live forever. Right? And Jesus was going, oh, I can obey. Right? But I and each of us, we're not 100% obedient. You know? For, because maybe the world is built a little crooked too. You know? we, we didn't have that tenacity to say uh, we should be bigger than the world. We weren't bigger than the world. We weren't bigger than ourselves. So then it's like, okay, here's a skeleton. Okay, but you can go to that thing. But I could believe a man or woman who does the right thing and go follow them, right? Go follow Jesus. <laughs> Don't do it for your own, you know. I wasn't big enough on my own, but say, follow the big guy. Right? But there's a lot of me, like my friend John, he grew up Jewish, you know, or atheist, or whatever. Like, look, why should he give up his faith for the sake of, you know, if it's a matter of belief? You don't go back on your faith, right? I don't, I'm not going to go back on my belief, how wrong it is. It's not right. So maybe just care to say, look, and, the good thing about violent people is at least they care. Right? They care about something. Because you know, there's worse things in caring. There's worse things in violence. But if you care, then maybe you can care about the right things. You will care about the right things. 
Then you can say, well, who's getting to the right things? And, oh, that big guy is doing pretty well. I think I should pay more attention to him, right? He lived the life I like. And, oh, maybe that whole world over there makes sense. Let's go do that, right? And then from doing this show, I realized, okay, but if you don't care, that's really the worst. We know too many people who stopped caring, right? They just curled up in the ball. So this skeleton here, the baby story was to say, the baby said, the baby said, I'm excited. The, the skeleton said, I just want to curl up and I'll go along. Well, God said, you can go along if you want to. I'm taking you places. Okay, I'm taking you places. When you stop liking, you stop liking where I'm taking you, then you'll start caring. Right? So don't worry about it. Just go along. But so to say that Jesus' life, his commitment to die, you know, that he didn't want to, not even because he didn't want to die, but because it wasn't really the way, I think, it was just not the kind of kind of person he, he was a more positive one. And so the last song we're going to sing is about going out into the world and coming out from the Jesus, right? And saying, we can ride that. You know, like, you can be our way, we can ride you out. Ride on, King Jesus! No! how I understood it. And so to be able to take this, and you can see, like, 
people from other faiths can look at this like in terms of testimony or gospel. I'm not asking them to believe anything. I'm just asking you, tell me, where am I wrong? You know, what have I said wrong? Teach me. Right? Or tell me, how would you... We, see, gospel music is so vital and alive, anybody around the world would be moved. But what would the Islamic people say the story to? What would Jewish story people say, right? Like Buddhist people, right? Or me heavy metal people, right? What would they all say, you know, or hip-hop? How does this sound, right, to all the people of the world? So to have a mass for all people, these were, you know, that anybody, two, three people come together and say, let's look at all the ways we can be with God, just remember God, include God. The one who wants the good, and the one who wants all the good, and the one who wants, you know, doesn't have to be good. <laughs> so, this, if you happen to notice, this is 10 feet by 60 feet. It matches the size of the Martin Luther King room. And it's something that's easy to expand and redo. We could have our own wall of saints, right? And so certainly this is something I'd like to keep building and working on improving. And if you think in your heart, like, you know me now, this is people, John said, all this is in you. But we didn't get to see it, right? And I made this so that I could show and see what's in my heart. And every one of us is like that. We got this whole thing inside of us that people don't get to see, right? And I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to show mine. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. This little line of mine. I'm going to throw in cardstock. You uncover, you check. Is it four? Now, John and I have PhDs in math. We know that. All of these will be yellow because they're even. The threes will be red. You know, the fives will be blue. We're going to teach these kids deep, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but this is, uh, you get it right? So maybe you put it on this L if you want. If you could fill up this L before, uh, before you fill up, or she fills up the O, then you get to win. Okay. You make up games and stuff, right? Okay. Now imagine, I talked to a gang house in Inglewood where I live. This gang house is in Inglewood. And I went up talking and said, if, we make, if I make this, would you hang it on your front fence? Because you're so popular, right? Like, they go, we'll do it, right? Now I came around the second time, I go, he doesn't count for nothing, you got to talk to Sid, right? But I'm just saying, in principle, like, you know me, like, I, I have no, but it doesn't have to be gang it could be nice families. But the difference is, like, are you going to hang this up on your fence so that you're sociable, right? Like, any family is, like, they're willing, you can put a block, you know, you can go to a family who hangs something like this, you can ask them a question. If there's a hundred of these in Inglewood on fences that people are hosting, right? That just changes everything. Art changes everything. The conversation, I, the, the program we had today could never happen without art. Because art changes the rules, right? So in the music changes the rules, right? A hundred of these will change. So that's the next project. There could be thousands of projects. Thank you. Oh, so what Father said. I talked to Father said, you know, I'd love to have the show at Hope at our, it could be a name, but it says, we'll form a committee. Okay? So if you'd like to be on such, we'll talk about it. And if I ask you, would you be on the committee, or if you say, I want to be on your committee. Uh, Cliff Johnson is an artist, he said he would be. Re Rennie's an artist, he said he would be. And he said she would be. Very good.